Okay, can um uh, can everybody hear me? Yes, now. Okay, cool. Thank you for your response. All right, so hey everybody, happy Sunday. Um, I'm pretty excited for this trading week. It's been a lot going on in the world. Um, it's been a lot of negative things, but that doesn't mean it's negative for us as traders. That just gives us better trading opportunities. So I just want to cover a little of uh, fundamentals that's going on the world in the world. So with the euro, there's a lot of fear of Russia cutting off gas prices. So a lot of pairs in general that's going against the U.S. dollar are going to be falling. Um, but for the euro specifically, it's if you look at the chart, like it's just on this straight decline because they got a lot of stuff going on. Um, also, with the Great British Pound, they're going through an economic crisis as well. Japanese yen, um, they actually got some help from I forgot what country help them to like help with their um, currency because they're struggling as well. So a lot of these countries is, is struggling. <laughs> the US dollar, clearly, you know, we got a lot going on. They're not telling us that we're in a recession, but we are in a recession. Um, sorry. Um, so basically there's a lot of stuff when you when you research that we know that the, that the public doesn't know because they're mostly waiting for the feds to announce it. But as we do our research, we already see what's happening. Mortgage rates are at 6%. And this is the first time it hit 6% since 2008. And we're just starting to increase interest rates. So the fact that we're hitting numbers from 2008 and we're not even deep into you know, the hike of the interest rates just shows that it's gonna be worse um, than the 2008 recession because Jerome, he announced that he doesn't plan on stopping increasing the interest rates. He says that he's going to keep increasing interest rates until 2024. So with interest rates hike going up, that means a lot of stocks are going to be falling. So if you sell US 30, there's going to be um, a stock market crash. Um, it's already going down, but it's just going to keep getting worse. Um, and as interest rates go up, you guys know that that makes the US dollar get stronger because a lot of people put their money into the US um, bonds. And bonds, if you're not sure what bonds are, bonds are basically, how can I explain this? It's like you're lending money to the government to use for um, military things and other stuff that they use because there's only so much money that can use out the bank. So they turn to the public for assistance. So you're basically giving them a loan and they pay you back, but with interest. So as interest rates keep hiking, that means that's gonna mean more money that they have to pay you back. And um, so they have short-term bonds and they have long-term bonds. So if that's something that interests you, you can, I would recommend getting short-term bonds. That's basically saying you're giving them one to four years. You, you'll choose like which, how many years you want, but after that year is up, that means the bond has matured and um, they're guaranteed to pay you back what you paid for it plus interest, if that makes sense. Does that make sense, what I'm saying? Yes. Okay, cool. So um, overall for um, these pairs, I'm looking at Euro USD, gold. Um, uh, those are the currencies I'm trading and I'm trading this 30. And I'm not trading GU just because I don't like trading multiple pairs, but that's a pair that's also gonna be declining. I'm gonna be showing that too, as I sh um, share my chart. Um, so I'm about to share my screen, but overall, like I said, I'm looking for sales. Okay. Okay, so let me put this. Okay, so this is um, Euro USD. So as you can see, this four hour is right here that I drew, let me lock it so I can show y'all. So it's from point A to point B, pull back to 61.8, and then it's kind of heading towards 61.8 um, TP2, but it's not there yet. And once it gets to that point, it usually indicates like a reversal of the major trend, but we don't have to worry about that right now. But this is still showing us that it's still overall in that downtrend. Let me move this out the way. Okay, so right now, what I'm looking at is I'm on the 30 minute time frame. So this is what I have drawn right here. I had this point to this point, 
and it just finished out, right? And it kept pushing down. But right here, we have some divergence right here. So if I put this RSI on, it's just two things doing the opposite. So right here, there you go. Right here, this is going up and then this is going down. So that's showing that it's gonna pull back a little bit. And also I have a zone right here because there's previous support and it broke. So I'm looking for a retest before it pushes down. So overall, this 30 minute is gonna be the, um, the bigger move. So like I said, I'm looking for this to come up to retest because as you can see, it broke, right? And we see it retested this zone three times. I like to mark it off for people who are more visual. I'm more of a visual person. So one, two, three, and then it broke. So it needs to pull back before it continues. So that's what I'm looking at overall. And also this, this zone is lined up with this trend line that I have, two points drawn into the future. So once it gets to this area, that's what I'm gonna look for a sell to um, TP. I'm gonna take it to TP1. I'm not gonna zoom out right now, actually. I'll show that at the end. I'll give you all the TPs in the, um, in the group. But for right now, I just wanna show you guys like my overall chart analysis. So um, that's what I'm looking for for that one. And inside of there, inside of that trade, there's another trade that I'm looking for. So on the 15 minute time frame, I have um, this trend line right here, two, two trades, two points drawn to the future. So what I'm looking for is for a break and then a retest and then to push up to this trend line. And as you can see, I drew another zone right here because there was a lot of support. One, two, and then it broke through right there. So now I'm looking for it to break, retest, and push back up. But I'm waiting for this divergence right here to, um, to finish. So once that's done, I'll place my fib, something like that. And I'm looking for, let me draw this out, to look for like here, oops, here, and then to this trend line. And then, like I said, that's what I'm looking for overall. That's the major move that I'm looking for overall before I get in for um, that major sale. But this is a uh, entry that you can get in before this major one happens um, if that's you know something that you would want to do. But it always depends on your try your your trading style and if you're going to be you know paying attention and being on your um charts like that but just make sure when you do trade this you need to have your trend lines and you need to have your alert set so you know where to get in and where to get out and as you can see i draw a line right here too along with the zone because i want to alert i want this to alert me once it gets to this point so if i see some wick exhaustion pushing off that's going to show me that we're going to be going back down here and then I'm going to have my alert on this trend line just to look for some more wick exhaustion to show me if it's going to be pushing back up. Does that make sense? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Would you buy up to the zone? Uh, well, I just kind of, I just went over that actually. So <laughs> that answered the question. So yeah, that's what, that would be a buy up to that, basically like that zone, but I'll put my TP like right here. And then I'll wait for it to, cause it can pass this trend line a little bit. So like right here, just to barely like retest it. And then it'll start like wicking down. And then that's when you'll get in for the sale. So yeah, so like that 15 minute time frame will be a buy up to that area. So that's it for EU. Let me probably do this. So the next one for gold. So for gold overall, let me. So for gold, I'm looking for it to push back up because again, it had this multiple times retest of this zone, retest, retest. It wicked off right here, retesting too, and it broke right here. And it had a slight retest as well, but it was just a wig. But I'm, I do see another pullback happening. 
before it dropping again. And also it retested this major zone multiple times. And this was a strong um, supply zone because as you can see, I think I drew this on my, did I do it for a weekly? I think I did it on the weekly. Oh shit, there you go. So you can see this is like a strong area that it's been um, respecting but now it's starting to break through it. And if you go on the four hour, you can see how many times it retested it. It, retested. it broke through it right here, and then it came and retested this area. One, two, three, four. So those are major signs that it's gonna keep falling. So that's why I said, like, even though I made this push down, we need to have like another pullback to add like a small fib inside of that area. If you guys have any questions, um, you can say them um, aloud because I'm not gonna be going back and forth to the chat and I don't wanna miss anything. Um, so yeah, and then right here, I drew a mini zone right here because this is a whole bunch of support, a lot of wick exhaustion right here, um, small consolidation. But like I said, um, I drew the this zone right here. So I want to see it getting retested. It can come here to the zone. It can come here to this uh pink uh line that I drew, uh, which was also being um supported and it broke through. So I'm looking for it to come around this area to the purple trend line. So there's multiple um areas that I have alert set before I get in for that sale. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And then with here, what I'll do too is on my 30 minute, wherever it stops, cause it could push down a little bit more before pulling back. Um, but once that finishes, I'll um, put my fib there. Oops. Um, I'll put my fib there and that'll help me get um, accuracy on what my TP is gonna be. Let me delete that. So that's what I'm looking at for gold, um, for EU. Um, and GU is basically the same thing. Like I have these lines drawn on just a previous support that was broken. So one thing I wanna point out is when you're in an uptrend and you're drawing out your zones, you wanna look for previous um, support from the past and then draw it to the future so that you can get that retest before it drops down. And it'll be the same thing, uh, vice versa. Like if you're in a downtrend, you'll be looking for resistance so that you can get in for um, support, if that makes sense. It should make sense, honestly. But yeah, so right here, I'm either looking for it to retest right here. It can, might, it can possibly do like a small, like a 15 minute pullback. So it could probably look like, like that. Pull down, yeah. oops. And then um, push back here and retest. Or, oops. Or it can just um, come here, retest, and then drop. But these are um, the areas that I found that were broken, that were previous support. So I want to see how price reacts. And of course, since this is this this was a huge drop that it had you have to have some type of pullback before you continue. And then as you can see, overall GU has just been falling, falling, falling. Same thing with um, the Euro. And like I said, it got a lot of things going on in that country. So it's basically everything is falling to hell <laughs> and the US dollar is staying up there. So these, this is how you take advantage with it and you know, I don't, I'm not teaching how to trade like US 30 yet because I'm still kind of learning for myself, but from an overall standpoint, um, since interest rates are rising and a lot of um, things are going on, a lot of the stocks are falling. So um, the stocks US 30 will be like the same thing, S&P 500, um, whichever that you guys may trade, NAS 100, they're all stocks. Um, so. That's what I'm looking at overall. I hope everything makes sense. Or if you guys have any questions, please let me know. I try to explain things as best as I can, um, just so everybody can digest it. 
yeah, I've got I've got a question. Um, so with the so with the overall uh, trend, if obviously we're looking for so short term bias is a, is a buy, and long term bias is a sell. So are you waiting for like a major news to come out for that sell? Um, I don't really wait for the major news to come out. I just kind of just go based off that technical and then keep my stop loss at that previous high. So let me um. Do an example like, <laughs> like for Euro right here, like as it pushes back to this trend line, and I have my zone from like, I mean my fit from like right here, right here. I'll keep my stop loss right here, because then like if you trade it overnight, you don't want to um keep too much of uh too much room in between because you know depending on your broker, the spreads can like knock you out, you know. But also, if you get in right here and your stop loss is right here, and then you start pushing down, boom, 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 after you get to a certain point, you can start adjusting your stop loss as well. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. But um, when it comes to uh, trading the news, I tried it one time. I ain't doing it again because <laughs> it gave me anxiety. It was too much. I don't know how people be doing that. So I'd rather just like just catch like the overall move and just like wait it out. Because either way, it's still going to go in that direction. Because sometimes news can come out and then it can be going for a sale, but it'll spike up real quick before it starts pushing back down. And I don't like that. Take out your stop loss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't like that. Last time I was doing my hands were shaking, I was like, oh, no, this is not for me. <laughs> not for me. <laughs> yeah. I've seen that with gold. Um, I think this week, on Wednesday, on Wednesday I believe, um, mm -hmm. where it spiked up and people thought, God was going up because it was it. Yeah. Let me see. And then, and I remember you saying that it will go down. The market just needs to balance itself out. And eventually it started going down. And there was just like a massive week on the four hour. Right. And I was like, oh, yeah. I remember you saying that it will go down. It was just like this um, the massive fake out price went up and mm -hmm. it started up and it's faked a lot of people out and then it started coming down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's what they do they like to get people out their market so that's why i was telling y'all to adjust like the stop loss too um because i if you guys were in that i just said like that trend line would have been like that key area like if it would have kept breaking that trend line then it's like okay we're not in the sale no more but it literally respected that trend line twice um for that sale but yeah but that's what the news will do it'll like spike up get that fake out and that's where a lot of people get caught up in is in the fake out So, um, yeah, so that's what I'm looking for right now. And um, literally right now, as we're on this call, the um, Euro is doing exactly just that. So let me show y'all real quick. So you see how it's already like pushing past? Like, so this is why I say like, trend lines are super important. Um, if you guys trade US 30, um, I'm gonna just show y'all, but don't 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 listen to me because like I said, I'm still learning. Okay. <laughs> Overall, I do see it like selling, but I'm gonna take advantage of like these smaller trades, like 30 minute and 15 minute time frames, because I want to show y'all on a four hour. This is a major zone where it kept retesting it multiple times. One, two, three, one, and then it finally broke. So I'm looking for it to eventually like push back up and then falling. But in between that move, there's multiple smaller moves to take advantage of. And I have them written out right here. Cause like I said, when you're in the uptrend, you want to look for um, that previous support so that you can retest it. So when it comes back down, you can draw your fib and then take it to uh, TP and then just adjust it like each time. So that's what I'm looking for right now. So that was just something I wanted to quickly say. And like I said, with these interest rates and everything, the stocks is crashing and we just in the beginning. We're not even at the worst. So it's just going to keep getting worse. So that's about is it. there any major news this week? Huh? Is there any major news this week? Um, I saw that Jerome, um, he's going to be talking like, he's he's part of the feds. He's going to be talking like twice this week. I think on Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm not sure. It's on uh, any major news is on forexfactory.com. All right, thank you. Yeah, but I know that he's talking. Yeah, yeah. he's talking Tuesday and Wednesday, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's talking Tuesday and Wednesday, yeah. 
Um, so that's basically it. And do anybody else have any more questions? No, I'm good. I'm good, man. I'm I'm getting the I'm getting I'm getting the hands of things now. Um, so I'm happy. Right. Yeah. Everything is just like practice. Um, the zones are really important too, because even if you don't have a trend line break and retest, you can have a zone um, break and retest. And like I said, um, you just gotta look in the past and find like that previous like support and resistance. You can either draw a zone or draw a line, whichever you want to do, and that'll help you like with those uh, retests as well. I have a question. Sorry. Uh -huh. Sorry. Um, sometimes I, I'm not sure if I'm doing the break and recess right. Is it that you wait for the candle to completely close and then another one to form before you get back in? Yeah, so when you see a retest, you want to look for, I, I set my alert to, it depends. Sometimes I set it to alert me per minute or sometimes I'll, let, I'll tell it to alert me when a, a, when a candle closes there. Uh, cause when that candle closes is, I want to see like three candles near that area. And I want to see if it's either giving a lot of wick exhaustion or if it's like very like bullish or bearish. So if it's very bullish or bearish, I mean like the candle is like full and there's like no wicks, then that means it can easily like keep pushing through. But if you see like those wicks that's showing that it's retesting it. Okay. And do you always look for it on the 30 minute or do you use other time frames as well? I always look for on a 30 minute. I rarely look at it on a 15 minute because if I'm getting in on my overall like one hour, I'm going to be on the 30 minutes looking for it. But if you're trading inside of a 30 minute, then you will look for it on a 15 minute. But you can always like trade a, a switch between like 30 and 15 minute and see which one looks more clearer for you. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. Yeah. But just like I said, um, just make sure that there's wick exhaustion and not um, bullish or bearish because you don't want to get in and those candles are full because that means it can keep going in that direction. All right, anything else? If, if no other questions, I mean, that's pretty much it. Y'all know I like to give it real fast, simple, straight to the point and easy to digest. Um, so that's pretty Thank much Thank you. Of course. All right. I'll, um, update you guys in the chat once I get these, um, bibs adjusted with the TPs and everything. Thank All right. you. Thank All you. Right. Bye. No problem. Thank you.